Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to go through turning your an ordinary Xbox 360 wireless controller into an arcade stick like the one that I've got here. I've built one already and I'm just building a second player now and I thought people might be interested to see how I do it. Uh, you can see here this Xbox 360 controller has been pulled apart and I've soldered a bunch of wires onto this and they go back to the control panel actually here. Uh, so it means that you know when I hit up or a button on here it maps through the wireless into the Xbox 360 um, so that you can play games like Street Fighter um, 4 or Tekken 6 or whatever you have or uh, Xbox Live Arcade games you probably already know why you want to do it and I'm just going to show you how uh, there's probably other ways to do it and this is uh, a relatively easy way if you don't mind wrecking your controller Okay, so I'm going to list all the things that you're going to need. Number one is an Xbox 360 controller. This is a brand new one that I've just bought. You can even tell it's got the instruction manual still inside. Uh, the reason why I had to buy a new one as opposed to using the ones that I already had is because uh, inside inside the control, uh, sorry, the battery pack here, it says J7 on the motherboard. It needs to say J7 uh, if you want to use this process that I'm doing, which is a common ground and in each button is a signal. Uh, what that means is half as much soldering and uh, most controllers sold these days I think at least for the last 12 or 24 months have been this style so you shouldn't have a problem if you go buy new ones but your old ones might be a problem. Uh, it won't be impossible just mean you'll have to uh, jump a uh, ground and also a signal button uh, wire for every single button which can be a pain. Uh, soldering you're going to need soldy, a solder I think you're pretty much only going to find 60% tin 40% lead and that's what I'm using. Uh, you're going to want a pencil tip style soldering iron. This is not a particularly special one. I think it cost me 60 bucks from Jaycar, uh, but it is much, much better than the older one. I highly recommend getting a different soldering iron if you've got one with a big fat nib as opposed to a skinny one. It's going to make it a lot easier. Inside here is some really quite small soldering stuff you're going to have to do. Uh, a T8 Torque screwdriver. Uh, this is for the screws. Uh, the seven screws are on the back of the control here. There are seven, and I'll show you where the seventh one is in case you're trying to open the controller and you're having some trouble. Uh, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. That's to scrape off the uh, the contact stuff inside the buttons, uh, some needle head, needle nose pliers, and uh, you know just some wire. This is 12 mil type uh, uh, wire. It's uh, I'm using two colours: one uh, green for ground and red for signal. It's just going to get pretty messy inside there. So it helps. Uh, there are six screws: uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there is a seventh one. Don't forget this one, or please realise that there is another one behind here. So you need to pull apart. I'll pull off this barcode and then behind there you have this one here and you must be using a T8 uh, style Torx screw driver. Okay so now I'm just going to show you uh, something with the preparing of the contacts. You need to scratch it, the, each of these black contacts off with a screwdriver such as uh, this little flathead that I'm using here. Uh, just lightly scrape over the top and you'll see this powdery kind of black residue starts coming off and then just blow it off like that to get rid of it. Uh, you need to do that so that you get a clean contact when you're soldering the wires onto it, otherwise you'll find that you really need to apply a fair bit of pressure to it to actually make it contact. Uh, it's actually pretty amazing how, how well these uh, rubber things actually work. Uh, they make a great contact across it and it just seems to be really hard to do using a soldering iron. Um, so to figure out what is the uh, ground and what is the uh, signal, basically just uh, get a you know piece of wire like that uh, just cross between, you know, from here to there if nothing happens, uh, between here and here, uh, then try, you know, from the top one to the bottom one. Uh, if you get the red button going, then you know that you've found the green ground and the red signal. If the uh, green button goes, then you know that you've got the reverse, and basically you just keep on doing that. Once you've found a ground, you can just start touching each of the contacts, and depending on what button comes up, uh, well, you're actually pretty much going to know what button comes up each time. You just have to figure out whether it's at the top or the bottom that's actually the ground or not. And uh, yeah, just repeat a bunch of times. Okay, so it looks like this does uh, this controller does perform how I uh, was hoping that the other one would, and just expected it to, I suppose, and that was uh, the assumptions of the mother of all. Uh, so this is a demonstration of a single ground wire coming off the actual control pad itself. You see the green one here I'm using as ground. Uh, it goes up uh, to this button here, uh, and then daisy chained off to this one here. And then you can see both of them have got a single red wire, which is the signal from the correct button. And the uh, output effect is, hit that one, and we get green, this one. Okay, so here's a demonstration of me just trying to find out uh, what is the signal and what's the ground. I've just uh, jumped it from uh, where ground is over here, off green. And now I'm just going to, you know, touch each of the contacts to try and find uh, what the, the signal is for each of these. Okay, so obviously that one right there. 
bottom is globe button. Whenever I touch that, globe pops up. Uh, globe then goes away. Uh, what else we got? Uh, start. Uh, there's no way for me to tell if start's working or not. And select either. So I'll have to go to another menu or something to try and figure out what uh, what's actually being shown there. Uh, LB or RB. Yep, okay. So that's definitely RB there. Um, it's flashing on the screen and we'll do the same with LB. Yep, that's definitely LB. Alright, I've got my uh, signals now for three more buttons. Okay, I don't know too much about soldering, but uh, just a few things that I've picked up since I've been trying to do this controller. Um, first of all, uh, when doing this kind of fiddly work, uh, you can tell it's fiddly because some of these contacts are really small and quite hard to uh, you know, kind of get some solder on there. I started off with a big fat one yesterday, uh, that is soldering iron, and I've changed to this uh, kind of pencil tip one. It cost probably, I think it was $60 compared to a $12 one, uh, and it has made a massive amount of difference. Use 60-40, so that's 60% uh, tin, 10%, uh, 40% uh, lead. Uh, that stuff's pretty good. You'll see bad uh, solder compared to good. Uh, the bad stuff will go black once you put it on there, and it's really hard to kind of make it stick to stuff, but this one seems to be really good. I yeah, did have an older, worse off one. And also, don't forget to scrape the contacts when you're uh, getting ready to solder. Using Bluetech, uh, I don't know, it's probably not called that everywhere. I send your sticky stuff, or who knows what it's called elsewhere. But uh, anyway, I use it to set up the wire. You'll see it uh, just holding flush against the controller. And once it's like that, you can grab your tin. There. And I kind of just uh, grab the iron, pinning down the the wire, and then just mashing the solder against the end of the nib or the tip while kind of massaging it into the wire. And you'll see that it'll start smoking, and it'll eventually stick to the control pad. Uh, don't hold the tip against the control pad for too long because you might actually burn through the PCB. And once it's actually got a little bit of solder on there. Just blowing it, and that should cool it down. Then just give it a bit of a tap. Shouldn't have any movement at all. If there's any movement, it's going to come off straight away. All right, and then you go on to test. All right, here we go. Uh, I have finished doing all the wiring, uh, at least for Tekken, uh, which means I haven't done the left and the right bumpers yet. I'll do them next. Uh, I won't be doing the triggers, uh, all the analog sticks, just the D-pad and the four color buttons. Um, and, uh, as you can possibly hear in the background, I've got Street Fighter going, and there is the control pad right now, and I can assure you that, as you can probably maybe hear over the clicking, is uh, it's definitely uh, me doing that. So, uh, yeah, it's working pretty well, and straight away I can... It definitely works very well. I can do upcuts and... Bit hard with one hand, there we go. Yeah, quite nicely. I can jump diagonally. Everything seems to be working great. Uh, the start button as well, and I've got the globe button as this green one here, as you can see there. So I'll be uh, mounting that one to the chassis somewhere else. Uh, and then, yeah, so I've still just got the six buttons and the, the man. Um, back will also be like the globe button. It'll be one underneath, and the triggers I'll just ignore. Uh, and same with the analog sticks. All right. Pretty pumped. I'm going to go play some Street Fighter. Illustration of the arcade stick with uh, Street Fighter 2 HD. Uh, seems to be everything okay. Definitely uh, a little hard, but yeah, other than that, stick it back in there.